Uh, we're back. We're back. We're back. And we have Andre. I don't How remember you leaving, but we're back. You <laughs> they, they left. They left. The podcast left. Oh, we're hey, back. Welcome back. Welcome yeah. back, people. Yeah, welcome back. You know, we uh well, you said people, that's plural. It may just be person, honestly. Well, shout out to that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. You know, we're we're back. We picked up Andre. How are I'm you here. feeling right now? You are here. Uh, I'm hot. You're well, hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The uh, the but cheesecake it's... background. What was the uh, why? Why that one? Bruh, who doesn't love cheesecake? <laughs> Heard that. Bruh. Heard that. Cheesecake um, is delicious, dog. It's my favorite yeah. food. That's your favorite food. Sure. Look at that. Two minutes in, already learned something about Andre. That's yeah, crazy. No. Let's uh let's uh let's start with how we met, man. Do you remember how we met? Um, I remember you coming to uh was I don't know if it was Buzzmill first or maybe uh Slaughterhouse. Uh site um uh, over there off of uh Was that Little, little Woodrow's? Woodrow's? Little that Woodrow. Okay. That's when I we met. Remember. I can't remember if that was first or Buzzmill. Um, hey, Buzzmill. I feel like we met before that because I the only way I got into Little Woodrow's was because I had to text you. Um, right. Because I was like 18. Yeah, what up? See, now I think it might have been like, because uh, you couldn't have got into Mr. Trades. Right, right. I mean, I so, went like twice or like a handful of times, but they eventually like started like kicking me out and stuff. Yeah. Um, it had to be Buzz. I want to say Buzzman. That's where you. That's where we met. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think we met there. Uh, cause you saw him at Cap with uh DJ, right? DJ Collins. Yeah, I saw you there, but I don't know if yeah. we. I thought I knew you before that. I had but, seen you before that. Uh, the parlor. Were you ever there? The parlor. Which one was the parlor? Uh, it was the pizza shop. The open mic. Off quad. No. No. What about uh, Night Out? Did you ever go to Night Out? Nope. Nope. Didn't Night Out. That's crazy. Okay, maybe, maybe it so, was Cap City. It, oh, you saw me there. I don't think we talked. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I don't remember talking to you till Buzzman. Okay, and this was the the outdoor one, right? Right. The coffee shop. Okay. okay. And then what? What was that? What was our first conversation? Shit, I don't know. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually don't even remember. Um, my memory is terrible, though. Here's, uh, here's the point. Just, what's the point? We we met at an open mic. Definitely. Um, and I remember you were like, "Hey, man, uh, stop doing stand up like Kevin Hart." That was Buzzmill. That was Buzzmill. Yeah. Okay, you came up to me, or I came up to you. Uh. That's a good question. I think I might have, I probably would have caught you on the way out or something like that. Or like Maybe. while you were walking by or something. I can't remember. Okay. I can't either. But I do, I do well, remember that being a conversation. I was like, I should probably tell this, tell yes. this guy. Yeah. Cause that was pretty reserved. I didn't really like to talk to anybody. Maybe the host just to be like, hey, I'm here. But yeah. yeah. So uh, you saw me doing stand up, you know. Uh, you told me, you know. Uh, Kevin Hart, let's not do that. Um, but man, that's an open mic, yeah. We're, we're, uh, yeah, so we, we both do stand up. Um, you have what, like a year on me? This is like fourth year. I'm coming up on, yeah, four years. August will be four years. August will be four years. Okay. Yeah. Um, dude, how we, okay, you tell me not to be Kevin Hart. That was, that was really clutch. I, uh, I very much was like, okay, because I came from an acting background. So being yeah. myself on stage, never really did it, you know? So I was just focused on the performance, right? This will make yeah. him laugh. This is a great delivery. You know, let's do it. And then right, you right, kind of right. you kind of were like, nah, stand-up is, uh, is you, and that's how it's unique. Yeah. As which, you, ironically, which ironically makes you a better actor somehow. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Stand, think, some stand-up makes the best actor. Yeah, I feel like uh, really just acting is just uh, how I would approach it. Obviously, you have Leo DiCaprio, who's like, he's going to go full on, like, completely different person. But I like it how it's just basically, it's the character is you in whatever situation is going on. Right. 
So you uh you started how did you start stand up or why? Why did you start stand up? Why did I start? I started for like a uh a stupid reason because I saw the first time I did it, I saw Mitch Hedberg do his thing, his comedy right. central thing. And mm-hmm. uh I was like, nah, I could do that. You know what I mean? I got yeah. voted like second funniest dude in my high school. And uh <laughs> so that was a credit. That was <laughs> you were like, easy. I could easy. easily do it now. <laughs> Yeah, because you always I, see people. You always see people. You'd be like, nah, "Who told you you were funny?" Facts. I got, I got a whole high school that told me I was funny. So well, there's second. You were the second funniest. Yeah, yeah. Well, second. I'm just saying they told me I was funny. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know there was a competition. Otherwise, I would have wrote more punchlines and shit. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. I see. I got you. I wouldn't even try. It, so yeah, and I, you were second. And I got sick. <laughs> That's not bad. Without even, without even trying. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. I saw Mitch do his one liner. He's doing his one liners and shit. And I was like, man, I could do that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like two hours later, I was on stage. Right. I love this story. So Mitch Hedbert, uh, if you don't know who that is, that's basically he just exactly what Andre said. He gets up, he does one liners, and that's it. So yeah. you wrote how many one liners did you write? I think I wrote ten. Ten. Okay. And then I think it was ten exactly. Yeah. How'd you come up with them? Were they like corny stuff, or was this like? Yeah, it was pretty corny, but it, but it was like uh, Do you the remember only one remember? Yeah, the only one I remember was uh, if taxi if taxi drivers run the best routes, why don't they try to be NFL wide receivers? And did, did did you get laughs? Like when people were like, oh, that's I do I did get laughs because uh, you know how you got like that first time energy and you like it's like okay. uh, yep. the jokes made sense, but yeah. they were just like stupid corny. But when I look, got off stage, the guy that was running like the club, little the club situation, he was like, "Hey man, you got something? You should come back." Because you're writing punchlines, like yeah, these yeah. Are jokes. You're already it. ahead of 99 percent of the people who went up there. For sure, I was writing yeah. full jokes. Uh, I just had no like, I was just doing them like Mitch, like yeah, no substance. They weren't about yeah, you. They were just I up in ten one liners right now. And I think okay. I forgot four. Of them. I think I only told like six. Okay, so how long are you on stage for? Uh, maybe four minutes, four or five minutes. Six one-liners in four or five minutes, or is you at the yeah. improv? I was, I was taking my, I was taking my time for sure. That's crazy, yo. I was definitely okay. like pacing. And it went well. It didn't go bad. Okay. I got people to laugh and shit, so. Not bad. And then yeah. did you? When did you start doing consistently? Not till like four years later. That's now. No, no, I. would st- I, the first time I got on, I got on stage twice in one night in like 2013. Oh, I see. And in 2017, you started doing it. In 2017, I started going every day, multiple times a day. Okay. Let's talk about the I time decided, in between that. I decided to make a career of, at that point. Okay. I had, I had forgot about it. After I did it the first, that first time, yeah. I just forgot about it. I just wanted to do it, like just to prove I could, to myself I could do it. And then I had like... Uh, I have ended up moving to California to grow weed. I fucking came back here and uh, I got a job like driving a city bus. I fucking went to Lubbock, worked at a restaurant, just bouncing around, trying to figure shit out, travel a little bit. You know what I mean? And then when did stand up come back into your life? Uh, when, when did I, you start thinking like, oh, I want to like do open mics again? Probably like three years into like riding the city bus or driving the city bus and uh they had the funniest person in Austin competition, and I started thinking about it. And I was like, man, I could probably win that. And then, uh, so I, I entered it, and then really just thinking about doing that competition, starting with the, the August before the competition, because, you know, the competition starts in, like, March or something. Right. So the August before, which was 2017 of August, yep. uh, I was like, yeah, let me go try to win this competition. Okay. And then did you go open mics? Yeah, multiple, two, yeah. three a day. And a then, day. so the first, so the last time you had done stand up was just ten one liners. Was your approach different? Way different. So Immediately, I started doing it. the first time I got on was like, like trying to tell like a funny story that happened to me. Okay. I, I got completely got away from the bitch head back shit. I was just like, you were just basically roasting that dude because you were like anybody can do this. That was the I was kid. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of trolling him. You okay. Know? And then you started like, getting the stories. Yeah, because I knew what stand-up was. 
I just uh, I knew I wasn't gonna be like a one line. One, I was, I'm too dynamic to be a one line. You know what I mean? Yep. It's too uh, it's too confiding. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I just like tried to tell a funny story about how this girl I had went up to this girl, and uh, like I was trying to ask her out, but she wasn't paying attention. But I was talking. I knew she could hear me because I was talking like right next to her, and she didn't even turn around to look at me and shit. Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> where, where was this at? What was the setting? Oh, some some bar at, uh, in like Pflugerville or Round Rock or something. Okay. Black girl. It was like a it was like a little hood spot. Okay. And, and she's not okay. Y'all are at the bar. She's not focusing on it, but she can hear you. She's focused on the she's focused on the dance floor. Like she's standing up looking at the dance floor, people dancing. Okay. And I come up next to her, I start talking, and she don't even turn around. She just keep looking at the people dancing. Okay. And I asked a couple of questions. I got no response and I just walked away. I was like, all right. Shit. So what was the end? Was that was that the end? Like, uh, like well, a... I was just talking about how it, I was talking about how it was like I would rather do stand up than have to go up to another chick and ask her out and get that response. You know what I mean? Like I would rather get on stage and fucking bear my soul than like get played by one chick. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I got you. That's yeah. crazy. Yep. Do you still tell yeah. that story or have you thrown that joke out? No, nah, I haven't told that story. I think I stopped telling that immediately. <laughs> okay. What was it? Was it? Do you remember the first joke that worked? Um, like when I say worked, I mean like it's in your set now. Yeah, it's, it's the Cracker Barrel joke. I talk okay. about this, this this place in uh, California. They let an Asian restaurant come into the business. The name of the Asian restaurant is Yellow Fever. How come, you know, if Asian people can do it, how come black people haven't opened a restaurant called Niggas? Mm. I could see niggas, yellow fever, and cracker barrel all in the same place. It's fucking yeah, I close with that joke yeah. usually. You now close, oh, that's to, a closer. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it bangs. But now I'm starting to open with it. So I open with it and then I try to make the rest of the set strong. No, so, that's good. That's good. Yeah, okay. Move it, move it around. So you're you're four years into it. Um, how have you so from the first time to like now, how have you how have you changed? Can you see a big difference? Yeah, you're more poised, you're more fucking, uh, you like, you vibing, you end up vibing a little bit more with the people, with the crowds, with the, you're not so, I don't get so nervous anymore. Now it's just like, it's just an extension of me at this point. Okay. So it's like, I would rather be having like a conversation with somebody off stage and then just walk right on stage and start talking to the crowd and then get off stage and keep talking. I want it to flow like that. You know what I mean? I don't want I'm it with to you. Yeah, I don't want it to be so like uh well, like an you ever see people, Yeah, you ever see people like right before they get on stage, they're like, oh dog, I need like 30 minutes of quiet to like put That's my me. shit together. That's me. You're you're looking at him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't want to do that. Cause I, I want to be on stage so much where it's just like fluid. Natural. You know what I mean? No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I got a million jokes I can pull from and then I just get on stage and see what works, see who see how the yeah. crowd's feeling. That that and natural then, feeling looks really good. Yeah. Um it's so right. what's crazy, okay, because I asked you uh, at the beginning, um, either either were, how nervous were you or like what was your like when you first started doing it? You said it really didn't affect you that much because uh, you were like, you were kind of like grown, like you were like late, like 30s when you started. So you didn't really like, you remember this question or what I'm talking uh, about? Yeah, I'll tell you this, though. The, the first time I did it in 2013, okay. before I really got started, uh, I did. I got on stage, and I wasn't nervous to get on stage. I was on stage. I forgot some of the jokes because I was a little nervous, but it didn't really feel like much. But then I got off stage and got in my car, and uh, my entire body, like, tightened up. My stomach, like, turned into, like, the biggest, like, it felt like a football was inside of my stomach or something. Like, it was so tight. And... Uh, or like a big knot, like somebody had tied my stomach yeah. in a knot. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I was doubled over, dog. I was in pain. Like That's I was crazy. Hurting. I was it, all the all the energy came after I got off stage. Okay. Which I think which was a blessing because otherwise I would have never like said well, facts. anything. Facts. Uh, but once I got over that, that I mean that's the most intense feeling I ever felt from stand-up was that very first time and then you get in the car and you're like oh shit like everything tightens up you're like oh shit like yeah. what the fuck what did i just put myself through and uh that's when all the anxiety came but after that it was just like small nerves 
just trying to figure out how to like keep the crowd's attention and like look at people and you know. But now I look people in the I look people in the eyes and shit now. Yeah. I just talk, I just talk straight to them. Now in 2017, when you when you did it, this was the first time you did it, and you were like actually trying to like I feel like it was more vulnerable. It was more serious. What was the feeling then? That was just uh it wasn't the same feeling. It was like like I said, then it was just like getting used to being in front of a crowd. That just those nerves. And, and just like, all right, we got to, because you got a lot of people watching you, and then you got you to like. But you're, you were, okay. Them, was you there an after effect? See, like the first no, time? No. No, no, no. Just straight up, just the crowd. Nah. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, once I, once I decided to do it, it was like, all right, we just go, we're going to power through. How, how long yeah. did you do it before you started doing shows? Shows? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I did my first show, like maybe – Maybe five months, four or five months uh, after I started. Okay. And then I, how long do you like? And you did? Yeah, I got paid. Marcellus, then, Marcellus uh, Creighton paid me $20. Yeah. And how long did you do? I, was, uh, I think he gave me like 10 minutes or something. 10 five, minutes. 10 minutes. And I then how so. long until you started like going outside Austin to do stand-up? Uh, maybe like... Not too long, actually. Maybe like a, a year, eight months to a year. We started going to San Antonio. Okay. And then San- how did you how did you find all the open mics and stuff? Did you go through Facebook? Yeah. You know, everything's posted. Everybody, this um, Bad Slava was the one I used in New York. I hit up people in uh, London out there. They had like a list of, of things. Somebody sent me like a PDF, like a, like a Microsoft Excel list of, it was like 70, 80 mics and shows and shit. Um, and that was for the month or the week? Uh, that list was like for the year. Because okay. out in London, they book, it, they book everything like quarterly. So ah. uh, you got to kind of like hit them up. Kind of, sort of, yeah. You got to hit them up like two, three months in advance or something. That's crazy. Yeah. Is New York like that or is New York kind of like how we do it? Well, New York is more like you just got to, people, you just got to grind it out. Okay. Until people see, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what's the difference? Let's go, let's go London. How's it uh compare that to to Texas, like the crowds? Um, like does your material translate easy? Some of it, if it's personal, yes. But if you're talking about like, if you got like a grocery store joke, you got to change the grocery store or something. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just so that you can relate. Were but, you uh, uh? Did you approach it differently the first time you went to London, or like the first time you did a set there? No, I just, uh, I tried to write jokes that I knew what they could relate to because that's, you know, that's always important. So I tried to write about things that I seen when I landed or things that I was experiencing. And then that way I could just kind of be on their side. They'd be on my side. And uh, the crowds were cool. I mean, it was, I think I did like 10, 12 shows or something like that out there. And uh, it was cool. Everybody paid. Everybody was like, uh, you know, they stuck around. They paid attention. It was, it was fun. I had a great time. I want to go back. Okay, and then how's it? Uh, how's that scene in London different than here? Um, like, uh, even maybe, even like with like comedians and like, are they still at like bars? Is that like where they do most of their stuff too? Well, you know they call them pubs, but the pubs have like upstairs, so they got like an upstairs area sanctioned off for performances where there's like a stage, a sound system, and shit. Okay, it's like going to. Uh, I'll imagine like, you you know Shakespeare's. Uh yeah, yeah yeah okay kind of well Shakespeare says an upstairs but if you can imagine they're upstairs not the big upstairs with the games in it but the smaller upstairs if you can okay. imagine that like blocked off and like full of chairs and like set up it would be like that like the bars downstairs then the performance is upstairs so you walk through the bar grab a drink go upstairs you know they're taking tickets or they're taking a uh, yeah they're selling tickets and shit and uh yeah but over there I feel like. Well, now it almost feels the same where people are coming out just to see comedy. You know what I mean? Okay. Like they, they're buying tickets in advance. Comedy is a big deal. You know, whereas before Austin wasn't really that big of a scene. Right. But now it feels like the fucking epicenter of comedy. So it feels like a big city arts district and the people are out for it. They're coming out for comedy. So now it feels similar. But before it didn't feel that way. That's wild. And then you went, yeah. so you've done Cali, right? Stand up out there? I went, 
I went to Cali. I did a couple open mics. I haven't done, I don't think I did a show. I think they were both open mics. One was in the backyard. One was at this place called The Mint. And uh, The Mint looks like a cool spot, but it was during COVID, so everything was outside. I see. And then what's yeah. uh, what was the experience like out there? It was cool. People are more, they're just more character -y. New York, it's, it's definitely how they talk about it. New York is where writers go. You know what I mean? Cali is where, like, you, like, you know, if you're more like have a character act, if you got a lot of characters in your act, you want to be goofy and silly and shit. Ah, so like the impressionists and stuff, you'll see them in, yeah, in LA. That, that's probably a better place for them because New York is like jokey jokes, up, real jokes. Yeah, you know what I mean, like real, real energy behind their jokes and like clever, kind of witty, but okay. hard hitting at the same time. And this is uh majority of the people or do they still have like bad comics like we do here yeah yeah no they got bad comics but the thing about being in bigger cities is you can go to an open mic and you watch a dude or a girl crush just crush and you'll be like that they must be a fucking professional and then you look on the instagram they got like 300 followers you're like what so the talent the talent bar is higher you know what i mean yeah i don't know, I don't know if on average I would say, I guess I would say on average, it's higher. But, you know, they, they got, they got good people. They also got bad people, too, just like we do. Is but, there, is there, do they, can you all, like, see the structure, like, in all their jokes? Is it, are they just, like, do they just look like they're training with, like, the good mentors versus down here? Um, it's hard to say, but the, their high is higher than our high. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, like, like crazy. Yeah. I mean, now we got, like, Rogan and uh, the Creek in the Cave bringing people bringing better acts out consistently, but they don't. Most of them don't live here. But when right. you live around that and you can see those people, it's fucking yeah. The top of the top is their top is way higher. Is there is there like a lot of people that like sign up for the mics in LA, New York, New York? Uh, yeah, it depends on the mic, I guess. But uh, yeah, we had a. I mean. Even during COVID, we still had like 15, 20 people on the list. Oh, that's not bad. That's like down here. I would think they would have like 70, 100. It would go on for hours. Nah, I think some places cap it. But, uh, and then, you know, you got to pay. Some places you got to pay. Really? Yeah, so that keeps the numbers down too. But yeah, you can could, you could hit a mic with like 30 people on it for sure. Okay. And then is it kind of down here? Like you kind of just do the mic there and then you like do the shows there? Or is it way, is it just a different well, I don't get to stay in New York too long, but it's what it seemed like is uh, you just grind. Uh, you stay out and you stay relevant until you start hitting, getting booked on shows and shit. Because it's a, it is a lot of it is a lot of comments. You know, even though there's only like twenty, there might be like twenty people on the mic. There might be like exactly twenty mics yeah. in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it depends on you. Got to you got to move. You got to stay out, stay consistent. Uh, and just try to start, like, killing everywhere you go. How did you approach it? Like, did you do, like, four or five mics a night? Or yeah. did you pick and choose? No, no, because no, I was there during COVID, so we weren't out. We were doing Zoom shit. But we were doing, like, maybe, like, two or three Zoom mics a night. Sometimes i take a night off or something, but we tried to hit a multiple mics. And that was cool because you got to meet – I got to do, like – I did a show in, like, South Africa or something. You yeah. know what I mean? over zoom but it's like you're talking to like south african people and shit so i don't really get to do the the traditional new york run right because it's during covid during covid yeah so hopefully the next time i go back i have i will have made more contacts and i will have gotten better so i'll be able to like jump on some shows and then just go try to crush some mics at a at a, at a comedy club or something would you uh would you start your own shows would you do like any street performing or would you just go to like mics and stuff? If Wait. you were to, like, how how would you approach it? No. Yeah. Like, would you just like start like doing like a pop up spot, your own stuff, and yeah. do like some street performing? I always, I always do your own shit. I always Heavy. do your own shit, and still go, still go do other people's mics and shit. But do your run your own shows, run your own mics. Yeah, because people will come to you, then you start to meet the scene, and then they start telling you about other shit. Is that how you're you doing it here? Mean? I mean, here I was already. People already knew me here. Yeah. yeah. But like, 
you, and I started here, so I didn't start. I didn't know nothing when I started here. So what I would do is I would host other people's mics. Mm. So I'd be like, hey, if you're going out of town and shit, let me know. I would I would love to host. That's how I started. And then um, I forget what the first. I want to say Buzz might have been the first mic I started hosting. I was kind of plotting. I was kind of plotting on Buzzmill anyway. I was like sitting around waiting for somebody to to drop, so I could pick that up because I liked it. I liked it, Buzzmill. Which one? The outside or the indoor one? Uh, there's only one. They only got one now, Riverside. Oh, the the other one that you had closed. Yeah, that's the outside one, where I used to get let you go up last and do like ten minutes or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, so, so we got the uh, the stand up journey. Okay, how you doing it? What's uh so what do you okay, so now what are you what are you trying to do stand up wise? Are you trying to like get better or are you trying to like do like more festivals, anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's only it's only been four years. This is a yeah. this is a marathon. it's a marathon, dog. Yeah. So yeah, I always trying to get better. Right now I'm in the I'm in the phase of just being fluid, like I said. Like just yep. being just being comfortable being on stage all the time, every day. Try to I've been lucky to be booked, like, you know three to five times a week consistently for the last couple of months or so. So uh, just being fluid and I haven't been writing as much, but I've been thinking about it and thinking about the performance. So yeah, always getting better. How and do you, I, uh, do you say head mics or you just do the shows now? I haven't done a mic in like two months now. Yeah. That's crazy. dude. Yeah. So I tried to, uh, I'm running like a little experiment, but it's been working out. Cause like I said, I've been booked consistently. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. It's been working out though. How do you uh so when do you think of a bit or like a joke? How do you how do you write that in punchline? How do you get to there? Get to a punchline? Yeah, how do you write your punchlines? From yeah. when you have like a thought that you want to make a joke about. Uh usually the thought is what's funny. Okay. So my thoughts are are what's funny about it. And so you go, I kind of work backwards. Like, how did I get, it's like, yeah, that's funny. And it's like, what led up to that? So you write, that's the setup. It's like, this situation led up to my thought that I had, which was funny. So you just work backwards. That's how I end up doing shit. And then from there, it's like, what else could this be? Or what else, where else could this go? And those are the tags. So I think, yeah, I never really thought about it, but I th- what I think is usually the punchline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm usually thinking about the funny part, and then I you work backwards to how do we get here? That's the setup. You get to the funny part. Where else could this go? And then does this tie into anything else I have? Can we work this another way? And then that becomes like a you start the bit starts to form from That's that. That's crazy. I like so, that. Yeah. But it's like, like I don't know. Cause there's there's a way, there's a lot of ways to do it. It's like pe- some people just write jokes, yeah. Like they're good at they're good at like seeing the contradictory parts of jokes. And uh, I just write I just write like real life shit, and then figure out how to convey this in the most concise way. You know what I mean? I like the joke I'm working on now is like owning a pair of white shoes. Is like it changes your whole when you own a pair of white shoes. You walk different. You act different. Okay. You know what I mean, it's like uh, you don't it's, want to get them dirty. You don't want to get them dirty, so you start thinking different. You start moving different, and it's almost like if you think you're ready for kids, I own a pair of white shoes first and try to keep them clean for like six months, and it's like that process. It's like having two new white babies on your feet. That's how you act with white shoes, and you're like fucking. You know what I mean? You get real. Protective. There's a thought there. Not see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the energy. So I'm trying to flesh it out. I haven't written it down. It's just like owning white shoes is like having two new white babies on your feet. So and if that you, is if what you started with. Kids, was that analogy, what right? Yeah. What What were you looking at where you were like, no, that's I was looking is. at me walking, walking around in white shoes, like moving different, watching people walking towards me. Like, I know this, I know this dude ain't coming that close. Dad. Why are you coming? You know what I mean? And we're in a crowded place, so he ain't got nowhere else to go anyway. It's like, come on, dog, you could have. You see me with these shoes on, dog. You know what I mean? That's crazy. <laughs> and then you just found that. That's wild, dude. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I was watching yeah. me, and I was like, dog, this, just owning these shoes has changed my life. <laughs> that's wild, dude. 
So I just I start like with that. the funny part, and then you just start working it out. Just start like, what's this like? What is this? Why am I doing this? Do I look crazy? Yeah, I look crazy. That's you know the, I, mean? I like that. That's crazy. Okay, I like that. I like that. That's how I do. It. But some people can just sit down and write jokes. I'm not that. I'm not that creative, actually. Dude, I just, dude, I just put a mirror up. I grab a mic, and I just start I'm talking, sure. bro. I just like I'm like I'm doing this show right then, and I just yeah. do it so much. I just accidentally say funny things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, let's let's write that down. So yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to find some structure in it with the uh, the punchlines is not my strong suit. Yeah, well, you got to just think of. See, I think for punchline, if you think in punchlines, it's like you already know what's funny. Right. Like, I know it's funny to think about having two white babies on your feet. Like, that's funny. Like, that's and, to walk, and then you're walking around. It's like, that's an interesting idea. And you're moving uh, different with the shoes like you would with kids. Right. You're getting yeah. real protective and shit. Uh, so that's a funny, like, comparison. But if you just, some people are technically good at seeing it so it would might be it would help to write it and then you could see like oh the opposite of this is that you know what i mean like if you haven't thought of it yet you could just maybe like maybe seeing it would help think of the opposite or think of uh, a weird twist on the story yeah you know because you i don't know your brain works different when you start writing shit. yeah it you gives know? it like more structure and then you can kind of see it yeah you can see it kind of like put a put a face to it now you you don't uh you don't like to rehearse, right? Rehearse. Yeah. Like you don't you don't like to say like the first time you say the joke is like or the set is on is on stage, right? Yeah, usually. Okay. Do you write anything down or it's all Yeah, I mean I used to write a lot. But now like I said, I'm trying to be more fluid. So mm -hmm. I got like a little small little catalog of jokes right now. Okay. And uh, I'm just trying to like get on stage, be fluid make it feel natural work the joke in somehow and just make it like a real synergistic energy um but yeah i don't really rehearse and i mean that's what open mics are for for rehearsing do you uh do you record yourself huh do you ever record your sets yeah recording it video audio all of that shit yeah you do i don't, do, you all, do. I don't do all of them but if it's a good show i'll record the video just in case uh I know, it. just in case I do well, yeah, I can send it out. That's crazy, dude. But all the right. audio helps. Audio helps. It all helps. Yeah, it helps you uh, feel natural stuff. Is it, uh, well, yeah, no, yeah. So you did, yeah. uh, you traveled, you traveled, you know, um, been doing Travel. it four years, you know, you, uh, you talk about the real life and stuff. Um, honestly, I think, I think we know you, bro. Is there anything, uh, anything else you want to talk about in the podcast? Cheer. I don't know. What's up with you? With me. Um, yeah, we can we can talk about it. Um <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> dude, so I, I just got to Austin, right? Uh Friday. Um just for reference, it's Monday. I did I did a lot of stuff in Dallas. I found some uh some good rooms in Dallas. I like um I like okay. Do you do you ever like when you did mics, did you ever pick and choose or do you just do I would do all of them. You do all of them. Okay, but let's say let's say there's like three on Monday all at the same time. Do you ever filter your mics up? Uh, they're all at the same time. You try to hit it. I mean, you could hit three. You just try to reach out to people and be like, hey, I'll be late, but if it's still going on, I'd like to get a spot. Okay. Try, I, try, I would try to hit all three. What's, uh, what's your approach when it's like uh audience of like three people? When it's like what? What's your, what's your approach to your set when you get to a mic and it's three people out there? No, you just do it. If you got a new joke, if you got jokes you're trying to work out, you just tell them. Okay. I think you should be able to make anybody laugh. Comics, two people, I agree. three people, whoever's in, whoever's watching you. Just be but you have to, you have to like look at them a little harder because their laugh will be like breathing out their nose. They're not going to be like real like, you're not going to get really the volume. You won't hear it in the volume, but you can watch them and the, you can see if they respond and, you know. Do you do a lot of crowd work with that? Uh, you don't have to, but you can. Are you a crowd guy? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for me, that's the best. Like a like an Andrew Schultz type situation seems to be like the best. That's the best format I could think of that I would like fall right into. Yeah, I I always 
Not always, but I do ask people after the mic because usually I go one kind of towards the end, and I'll just ask them like, "Hey, what they like about the set?" And everybody always loves crowd work. They always love it interact with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. I uh so so in Dallas I found some like uh some good rooms I liked. Um, I always like when there's like you know ten fifteen, and uh, I will only do like just the three of those that week. I'll do like the little rooms if I'm trying to work on like the transition between crowd work to a joke. Because I feel like, especially with New York, that's how a lot of them are, is like not a lot of people. Is that right? Like at the mics? Uh, like the bar with like three people in it? Could be. I mean, but you still got the comics. Okay. And they watch? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes I'll be supportive. That's not bad. I just think, I think you should be able to do it wherever. I agree. That's my that's my philosophy. Whoever's watching, yeah. If it's if it is all comics, right, and they know your set already, then you just start like ranking on them, or just like you know what I'm saying, whatever. Yeah, the input. But yeah, it'd just be fun. I would love to do uh some street performance stuff, like at the park or like even just like downtown or something. Yeah, it's interesting. We did, I did a couple of park shows. Uh, I've done the park mics, but I mean yeah. like pop up. Like, yeah. set it up and just get, go. Have you ever done something like that? Yeah, this girl from New York, she was traveling through and she had us do her show at uh, Zilka. And she, she, she popped up, but she was only talking to like one person. So she had like a portable mic. So yep. I just grabbed the mic and the, the speaker and we went to the people. I took it to like a group of like 10, 15 people. That's so somebody, hilarious. Yeah, so I had somebody to talk to. Yeah, I did my stuff. And yeah. then they did the rest of the show at that spot instead of just the, the isolated spot she picked. But uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that's the hilarious. problem. With, the problem with the outside is uh, it's just you know there's a lot of distractions, so you got to be very engaging. And I feel very, like you can low key kind of play off the distractions. I feel like that's something you have to kind of adjust. You could. Yeah. I mean, you definitely could. I don't know. You, Chappelle used to run. Chappelle used to run with a dude that did that. Charlie Barnett, I think it was his name. Okay. But I don't know how he translated in the club. I know he did Def Jam, but I don't know how he translated like uh, into the clubs. Because, you um, know, Chappelle's style. Chappelle would do yeah, clubs. Yeah. I mean, he would do park shit after he got big, big. But that that tends to, to, to like... To start there? Up. To start there and go to the clubs, do you think it's a, like a much different switch? Well, I don't know. Because I'm, what I'm saying is Chappelle did it, but then yep. his style changed, and then he went back to the park. But him going back to the park later, he was already famous, so it kind of turned into a club set, right? right. People sat right. there and then paid attention. Like, they were like, oh, shit, Chappelle's here. Yeah. Let's watch this for two, three hours, whatever he did. To start out, I feel like they would just go crowd work to get the engagement. Of, and then a lot of, yeah. transition into a joke. Like, you just yeah. kind of, like... Well, being natural, like if you just already like good natural, then you could just be like, you talk about something and then you kind of go like shift the conversation towards the point of a joke and then yeah. say the joke. And then if they laugh. If you do it, I would also like look into like whatever, if you, whatever the city's politics are, or whatever's happening in the city and talk okay. about that too. Because people yeah. are the like, oh yeah, yeah that's right. That, that does affect my life. So I am interested in that. Okay. And, that you, I, I, you just got to be really engaged. You know what I mean? You got to, got to, got to catch them somehow. Do you have a, do you have a mic? Do I have a mic? Yeah. Yeah, we were on Buzzmail every Tuesday. Yeah, and you bring your own? Huh? You bring your own? Like you bring, bring like that's, own? that's, that's the one you bring to Buzzmail? Is like the one you have? They don't like have one? What? Like a mic. In a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about like an actual microphone. Yeah. Uh, like, nah, if you wanted to do a pop-up right now, like, could you have the equipment to do it or no? I don't have, like, a PA system. Okay. No, I used to have, like, a... I used to have a mic. I forgot what happened to that mic. I let somebody borrow. Um, but, no, I couldn't do my own pop-up mic right now. That's crazy. We got to find somebody who can and then go do a pop-up. Like, downtown. Put, put out, like a, like, a hat. You can rent the equipment, too. You could always rent it from like Guitar Center or something. Yeah, you think so? Like you think it'd be I worth know. it? I know so. You know so. You think it'd be worth it though? 
Uh, depends. If you want money, probably not. But uh, if you just want the experience, yeah. The experience. That can be a move, bro. We should do it. I mean, I'm yeah. not here. Yeah. We, catch, uh, catch, me, catch, me, catch me on the right time. Yeah. And uh, and travel a little bit. Uh, what do you what do you get out of like traveling? To like instead of doing it here or like doing it in Houston, do you get is it, Do you get anything out of it? Yeah, yeah a thousand things. Oh, you get to talk to different mindsets, different mindsets of people. Okay. And you get to see like uh, what what jokes you got translate, and like how like how uh, dynamics not the word, but like how. Uh, people respond to you like in different you know what I mean you get to you find out more about yourself you ever move to a place like by yourself or something here (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm also like 21 I'm very early in the life yeah that's the uh, that's the thing I'm trying to do is like branch out yeah like I moved to Puerto Rico when I was 26 by myself and uh, I was out there for like five months but you learn just being around different people and with not knowing anybody you learn a lot about yourself. And so traveling is kind of like that. You learn a lot. You learn about who you are. People see you. They talk to you. You're a reflection of them. They're a reflection of you kind of situation. Yeah. So, well, okay. so what's your approach? When you move somewhere new and you don't know anything, what's the first thing you do? Probably hit a bar and just, like, start talking to people. Yeah. Okay. And then what's the, uh, what's the thing you're trying to find out? Like a food just spot food. or, like, a thing to do? Yeah, yeah just the... It's all the same. Everybody's doing the same thing. Everything. Like you want to know where like the good food food place is, where everybody's hanging out, where like the happenings part of the city is, uh, the chill parts of the city, the dangerous parts of the city. Uh, everybody's. What I learned is everybody's doing the same thing all over the world. It's just people. People grow up different, so they they talk different. They have different sensibilities, right? Yep. Or they have different, or they. They might say like, uh, they might say the same, they might say something about your character that you didn't know, but it's, I don't, it's, hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, they just reveal things about you because of the way they grew up, right? They're seeing, they're seeing you through the lens of how they grew up. I see you. And so they, they might say something in their conversation that makes you think like, oh shit, that is me. Or, have you, have you had like a, do you have an example of it? Do you remember the last time that happened? Yeah, in Puerto, Rico, in Puerto Rico, this dude I work with, they used to call me Suave at the restaurant. They used to okay. call me like Suave, and Suave means smooth, right? But it's like, it's like, yeah, that's, when I played basketball, it was, it was just smooth like that. You know what I mean? Like, you just be smooth on the court. Uh, you talk, I got a smooth voice sometimes. I talk real smooth. Uh, and But to have somebody in another country tell you, like, sticks, and you're like, oh, shit, that is my personality. Like the way you transition between things is just suave. 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 <laughs> I like yeah, that. Yeah, he used to call me suave. And people call me suave. That's crazy. Remember. Yeah, so I'm saying it's like, yeah, nobody would call me smooth here, but it's like they felt like that was my, that's how I was coming off to them. You know what I mean? Not bad. All right, man. So the, What's the, uh, I, know, I know you have, you still do your Michael Buzzman? Mike at Buzzman on Tuesday, eight o'clock. Sign up on Wednesday. Sign up is on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, the, the week before. Um cool, man. And the thing the thing you're working on now is just uh getting more natural on stage. Yeah, doing yeah. that. Oh, what's your what, what do you think about like uh festivals and stuff? Festival? Uh I don't know. I'm about, to go to my, I'm about to go to my first one. Competition. My festivals, I'm about to go to my first one. Which one is it? Uh, the Madison Comedy Festival. And how'd you how'd you book that? Uh, the guy I know, uh, the guy I'm going with, he's going to shoot a special up there. He's from there. So he asked me to come along and a couple other people. So he just, he kind of hooked it up. Yeah, they're going to do a festival. Up there. That's going to be crazy, yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited. I got to talk to you after this. I'm excited to see what it's like. It should be fun. I mean, festivals are like huge networking opportunities. Yeah. Cool, so cool, be- man. Um, customary on the podcast, I always have the uh, person I'm interviewing or the guest on it uh, in the pod. How do you want to end it, man? Oh, shit. Hey, listen, be like water, dog. Bruce Lee style. Be like water and do what? Be like water. Be like water. When water enters the cup, it becomes the cup. Okay. 
So become a product of the environment you're in. Is that what you're saying? Be like water, dog. <laughs> Be like water. Awesome, man. It's been Andre. That's I me. love you, man. Thank you for being here. You, this is cool. I you too, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, not gonna lie, bro. Gonna always gonna remember. You would always let me at the end of the mic and do like eight, ten minutes. That was so. That was clutch. That really. Yeah. I really like. What's it called, man? Um. It. Well, yeah, 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 but like, uh, like just being on stage and stuff, and just doing like ten minutes at once. I really like, developed. Oh uh, yeah. A lot faster that way. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. I hope it. I hope it's good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love you, bro. Appreciate you. And uh, I don't know. Next time we do something, uh, it's going to be uh, cool and big. Yeah, let's get together. Like I said, uh, we can like, set something in stone. I've been pretty busy. So let's set, some, set, up, set something in stone, and then we can get to, like, Houston or San Antonio or something. Okay. You, uh, yeah, like a, like a travel thing? You want to? Yeah. Even if it's, like, a day trip, we just go out there for a day or something. Cool. Uh, let's do... Uh... I think what's next Friday look like? Oh, um, let's see. People listening on the audio were like, "Man, it got quiet." What are you talking about? The twenty fifth? Uh, la, 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 no, 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 no. Um, the second. July second. Uh, yeah, it would have to be a day trip though. Uh, so. What time would we get back? Like, what do you mean, did you? You know what? Like, we uh, we spend, like, a whole, like, second there, and then we come back, like, like, like that night like we, or what? Go down, we go down there Friday, and we come back Friday night. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, after, like, a mic or something? Yeah. What kind of car you get? <laughs> That's a... <laughs> bro, so, on Friday... No, this is this is... This is hilarious, bro. So <laughs> you thought it was going to be a straight answer. So on Friday, when as soon as I got to Austin, I hit I hit the midnight mic at the bus mill, okay? Yeah. Park McConnell Street, right? And I was going to work the soccer game on Saturday, okay? I come Saturday morning. I come to my car. Completely different car is where I parked mine, right? Right. Mine's gone. You got the Kia Sportage where mine's supposed to be. So I, I find out, bro. I call the city. They tracked my car from the license plate. A collision towing company has taken my car. Bro. What? I go down there. Some dude, this is the story I have. Some dude hit my car. The police called the towing company to take it. So that's where my car is right now. I have no other information. My car is just gone. This is Saturday. This was on like Friday night. And now it's Monday. So I have no car. That's that's what I have. I'm borrowing my friends, but it's not yeah, that yeah. So that so you, car, don't know, you don't even know where the car is? I know where it's at. It's at it's at the towing place. And uh I've seen it, and some dude has just completely like the whole back left of the car is just destroyed, bro. Like it's right. You are not. So they hit your car. They're gonna pay for to get your car fixed. Uh, that's that's not the message I'm receiving. Um, I'm wow. I'm I am in the process of trying to figure out what really happened to it. In the I, process of what? Like trying to figure out what happened to it. Like I know it got hit, but I don't know who. Like I just know police said come pick it up, so we picked it up, and I was just sitting in the towing lot. So you didn't pick it up. I didn't pick it. No, no you can't drive it. It's there. I've just seen it. Oh, it's fucked up. The car is fucked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, the yeah. police know who did it. Uh, Hopefully. I've been trying to call them, but they just, uh, they keep transferring me to different departments and going uh, to yeah. Figure that out. Hopefully, they do got insurance. If he ain't got insurance, then he's fucked. Who, them? Yeah, the guy that hit you. I, I don't even think they even know who did it. I feel like they just saw a car, and they were like, oh, let's tell it. That's what I feel like. See, that's that. Yeah, that's the problem. See, I was thinking they knew who hit it. That's how, because how they know to pick it up? Somebody else reported it. These are valid questions. Yeah, you should find out. Yeah. So, um, but no, I had a really cool car, and uh, I had like a Jetta, bro. Damn, no. Uh, yeah. So uh, I definitely would have driven this, bro. It would have been great. Would have been great. Shit. Yeah. Uh, I get like ten miles to the gallon. Oh, so you know what? We should we should probably skip. 
schedule this when I get a car. I didn't even think about this. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, can take let's... the van. Or we can rent a car, but I don't know. Yeah. What's your money? You working? Uh, everything. Everything's very temporary. Um, I have, I have like uh, this little thing for like a week and a half. All right. Well, when shit gets less temporary, uh, yes, let's get yes. let's go to here. We will definitely do that. Cool. Go to somebody. Yeah. Um. Cool. Yeah. We'll probably uh do August or something, or end of July. Okay. okay. Cool, man. Well, now awesome. End of July. I'm gonna be gone. I'm gonna go to uh Cali. Then we're going to Wisconsin. Then I'm going to the Dominican. Though. Are you going on tour? Going on tour, and then I'm gonna go chill out at the beach on the island. You're staying in Dominican for like you gonna a stay week. there? Oh, it's just a week. I'm gonna stay there for a week. Oh, okay. What uh? I'll what date leave? I'll be in Cali for like a week. I'll be on the tour for Wisconsin for two weeks, and then I'll be in the Dominican for. Okay, so it's like a month and a half or something, or a yeah. month. What uh? When are you leaving? Probably uh, looks like July 18th will be the start of all of that. Okay, cool. Um, I should I better have a car by then. So. Yeah, I hope so. Dude. I hope that motherfucker had insurance. Yeah, I, I hope we we know the the person who did it. That's first step. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll snag a car. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll go, we'll go down there or something. Um, okay, if not, when I get back, uh, yeah, when you get if back, you go, if you want to go stay somewhere, if you want to go stay somewhere for a few days, we can plan a trip like that. I'm open, I'm open to whatever. Okay. Uh, and when, when you get back, is it August, like late August? Uh, August 25th, August 25th, August 25th, I'll be back. Yeah. Okay, cool, so. yeah, definitely. Uh, it's been Andre. I don't know how much of that at the end I'm gonna leave in. I'm probably just gonna leave it all in, honestly. Uh, yeah, yeah just true. raw footage. Show, show you how how it goes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when you're just young in the in the stand up world. <laughs> Stupid. Though. I yeah. appreciate you having me. Hey, absolutely, man. Uh, it's been Andre. Be like water, and uh, we love you, man. All right, though. Love you too. Say that out. You have a good one, bro. Be safe. Yep.